Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new devlog of AEC Explorer. Today, I want to show you where we are at, where we are heading, and how is it going. So to get started, let's click on play, and maybe we can start with where were we. As you can see, when we click on play, we're gonna have a nice camera around our project and the ability to click on buttons. Let's click on load the project to explore where we have been before. So when I click on load the project, you will notice that we have a nice first person camera that's moving smoothly. And that's something I really like as well. And at any time we can switch between view modes. So the third person mode, this is a mode where we can use the meta humans we can switch to the drone mode and this mode i plan on expanding on this in future where we can have an advanced photo mode or dslr mode to easily take pictures of our projects and share them also we have the top down mode where we see our projects from ibird view or the top down view and i plan on expanding this mode in future where we can hide ceilings, walls, floors, and switch between an entity floor plans. So in addition to view modes, you remember also we have the teleportation mode. So I can click on take me to the living room or this bedroom or show me the pool. So in addition to the view modes and the teleport, I have done little improvements on the cinematic mode. So when we click on the cinematic mode, we can play a cinematic, we can pause it, and we can play backward, forward, and as well as bringing our taskbar for some interactivity. So for example, we can hide furniture, we can switch the lighting mode, and we can take screenshots as well as changing the time of day. So when I click here, change time of day, let me bring back the lighting mode. We can see what time it is, and we can change the time of day to whatever value we want. And we can at any time cancel the cinematic mode and when we do, our buttons will be active again. So let me bring back the sun a little bit and let's go back to our first person view. And let me show you also what's new. You may remember that we had some customization options here to switch the furniture, but now they only appear when we click on customize mode because I don't want for all my customization options to be always visible at all times. So now if I click here, we can see our customization options. And if we disable it, it will disable our customization options. This is also new. And this here is a scalable system that is using data tables to set our materials. And if I want to switch the materials on the walls, for example, I can click and I can add many more options. So here I will show you in a moment how this works. One thing I love doing in my project is just explore it. So now I can go to the other villa. Let me show you another customization option before I show you the others. So here, I like to do this. And that's why I have jump, by the way, because sometimes I just need to jump on objects. And if we have our customized mode on and we get near objects that are customizable, we will just see their customization options, as I mentioned. But if we have this turned off, we don't see anything that we can customize and we can just focus on the ability to view our projects. So if I click and I click on customize, I can select options like so. I can get near this, select the option. At any time, I can just cancel the customize mode like so. So let me cancel this map and show you some of the other new features I have been working on. I will click here and let's go to our test ground. Here is where I am developing things. So let's start with our customization mode for the architectural elements. So this here, as I mentioned, it's using data tables and I have one for the walls, one for the floors, and you can create as many data tables as you want. And you can then have a UI for these data tables based on your needs. And I go through all how we can design UIs and different needs and different methods in our lessons. And you can add the material selector, set the tags of objects that you want to change and set their data table. So for example, the floors, if I open this data table and I delete all these options, so we are left only with two options and I click on play and I click on 
customize, we can see now we have only two options. So if I want to add more, I would open my data table that looks like this. So we can first create a data structure where we have the name of the material, we have the thumbnail, we have the material instance itself, and we have what material IDs we want to affect. So we use this as a structure on our data table. So we have the name, the material, thumbnail, and so on. And I can easily add as many objects as I want. And then I would select the material instance I want. So let's say the glass and let's call it glass and you can set a, a, a thumbnail for this but I don't want to do that now and if you save the data table click on play and click on customize here this is the glass option click and now it's glass and you can imagine how easy this is to scale up so we have also a compass that I designed in Figma and implemented in Unreal Engine and we also have some other customization modes. You saw the ability to customize our objects in 3D but also we have the ability to customize them in 2D and by that I mean instead of 3D object floating in our world. No, when we enable the customize mode first we see an icon and when we get near our objects that we can customize we can see a user interface like this we can learn more, we can open a gallery or a website or anything you want. You have a text that you can dynamically populate. And finally, we have the customized mode. So here, for example, I've added four options for materials and I can click on any of these options to switch my materials. And if I want to add more options, I can click on my blueprint and I can go to where I have the material options and I can first select the meshes that I want to affect and second I can set the available material options. So here if I click add more and I click again on play first we need to enable the customize mode and when I click on customize you can see now that we have many more options and from here all you need to do is just the same as the data table to add their name their thumbnail and their material and they will just work so this is very very easy system to place in our levels and switch materials so in the same logic where we can switch our materials so this here called material swap system I have two more systems to customize our projects we have the mesh swap system and also my favorite the mesh and material swap system so first let's talk about the mesh swap system I can click on play you can see before I click on play the bounding elements for our icons so now I click on play if I enable my customize mode we don't see anything if I get little near now we can see the first icon and if I get more near we can see our dialog box with an outline around our mesh and at any time I can bring my mouse and that will stop us from looking around. So I can click here and I can select the mesh options that I want to select. And in similar logic, we can also switch our meshes and their material options. So first, before I go here, if I show you here, if I click on this, you can set the meshes that you want to change and then set the new mesh options, their name, their icons, and what meshes they are, and their material options. So this bed, for example, have four material IDs, then we can set four material IDs on it, and so on. So the same here, I would click on this blueprint. This is the mesh mat swap system. It has some data structures, buttons that will auto populate and the list where we can see our buttons. So this here, it works in the same logic. We can select the elements that we want to change. Then we can set the options that we want to have. And then we can set the option name, the texture, the mesh option, its default materials and the materials per option. So here I have six, for example, here I have the materials per option three I can add few more just for testing purposes now if I click on play so now when I enable my customized mode and I get near now we can see our dialogue if I click it will tell us hey select the mesh so when I select the mesh I can see the options on this mesh for its materials and for its meshes so that's something I really like if you don't want to select meshes one by one as I may have mentioned earlier we have this system where we can use tags and tags are very easy to scale on our projects. So any object that you add that has the tag walls, for example, you can click on play, you can click on customize and now 
these are the wall options we have you can easily switch them and the same for floors and so on so all these systems they can also borrow things from each other so we can have the same logic on one of these no problem anything my students wants i am doing this so it's a step-by-step -step process now what else is new we have this light manager so let's say at any time you want to have lights per floor or per room you can have this light switcher or light manager and then you can decide what do you want do you want to turn them on do you want to turn them off do you want to change the intensity do you want to change the color the temperature all these things so this is work in progress what else is work in progress i can show you this system here this is something i recently finished so big thanks to dennis the creator of archviz explorer for allowing me to look at his project, reverse engineer it and learn from it. I have done something very similar to what he have done, where we have points of interest of apartments. So if I click on play, we're gonna see our filtering system. And I've done a couple of extra things like showing how many filters or apartments we see. So now we see all of them 40, but if I start changing my filter, we're gonna see less and less and less. So now we see, for example, just eight and these here work as intended so you have the surface slider what's the space what's the budget show me only rooms that have two rooms for example or just one bathroom so now we see zero there are no apartments with these filters so this works as intended and we also have a button here to clear all filters if i change these and click it will clear all the filters. So my next steps includes polishing the user experience, creating more sample projects where we can show the power of AEC Explorer. And I also want to hear from you. So that's where AEC Explorer is heading. And as I move in the next stage, I need your help. What do you think is missing? What challenges are you facing when you are creating your interactive architectural projects? Because this tool is for you. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to shape the future of AEC Explorer, you can join my students group where you can share your thoughts, your requests, and we can develop this together. There are now more than 20 hours of educational content and more than 100 lessons, and we are still moving forward. I'd love to have you with me on this journey where we shape the future of interactive architecture together. So as always, thank you for watching, stay hydrated, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.